good evening friends so last time uh, we discussed about uh, the database and uh, some terminology and definition of database dbms and rdbms so uh, now uh, we are going uh, further and move towards the new terms so the new term is the relation So the new term is relation which is the data is stored into a table and table is the combination of rows and columns when we imagine a table it comes in our mind that there should be some uh, paper having rows and columns so this is the table and the table is also known as relation in rdbms so here this is the table you see uh, it has uh, three columns and four rows and this is also known as the relation so this is the table student and this is called relation as well so here the columns which we see like sid means student id S name that is student name, S class that is student class. These are the columns or the fields, or technically we call them the attributes. Similarly, there are some rows, the rows which you, which we you see in red. These are the rows. And the rows are termed as the records and technically we call them the tuples a record or a row or a tuple so when there are many attributes or you can say the collection of attributes is known as the degree and the collection of rows or records is known as the cardinality Now, what is a domain? So, domain is the area in which uh, people usually work. Like, if uh, we consider a school, a school is again a domain because all the students of this uh, of the school belong to the particular domain that is your school name. Similarly, there are so many schools in the city. Now, domain is city here. Likewise, in the school, there are many streams. The streams can also be regarded as the domain. Like science stream means the science domain, means the students who study in science domain, uh, the domain is responsible for their fees, responsible for their library activity responsible for uh, other activities like examination like CCA and all. So these are the domains. Like if you see this table, here are some students. First two students are from science stream. So this is, we can say this is the science domain means in this domain you'll find only science students you'll find all the practicals of the science you'll find all the science related activities so this is known as the science domain when we talk about the commerce domain there students will study accounts students will study economics students will study business studies so that is the commerce domain means all the activities related to the accounts all the activities related to the market all come under commerce domain so this is known as the domain the next is what are the properties of the relation this one should know 
what uh, properties does relation possesses. So here some properties are there related to the relation that is every column possesses an atomic value means column should not be empty. So every column should be filled with some value. This is known as the atomic value. All the rows of, of the table should be distinct means record should be should not be redundant means if the table is having records these records should be uh, you know should not be duplicate should be different distinct so that redundancy can be removed values in a column should be of similar kind means if the column name or the attribute name is name means all the values in the rows and the in that particular column should be the names of these ones or maybe names of anything likewise if the table has a column age all the rows must possess the age of these swings the order of rows could be immaterial it could be uh, sorted or it could be unsorted so these are the properties of the relation next this is very important uh, what we uh, what we are going to discuss right now and that is different keys so keys are what 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 a key what is a key so key is basically the column name and the key plays very important role or the significant role in a table so a key refers to a column which plays a significant role in the database so first key is the candidate key and this is very important and one must understand the gravity of this key that is a candidate key a candidate key consists of one or multiple keys and the column which is which uniquely identifies the record so you can imagine the record or the key which can identify the complete record is known as the candidate key and there could be many candidate keys uh, in your table but they should be uh, they should uniquely identify the records a candidate key should possess a unique value and should not be null. A candidate key should always be unique and should not be the null. Means it should not be empty. So this is a candidate key. A table can have only one or more candidate keys. More than one keys. There may be more than one candidate keys. For example, if you see the table, in this table we see two columns which are unique or possess the unique values like SID. This column is having unique values 1001, 1002, 1003. So these values are unique because they are not redundant. And the fourth column that is the email id this will also be termed as the candidate key because here also all the values are unique so these two columns are termed as the candidate keys so sid and email id can act as candidate as they are unique and not null hope you understood the concept of candidate keys like candidate keys they are another key which is the primary key so what is a primary key and a primary key can be selected from the candidate keys so uh, if they are candidate keys and out of those candidate keys we can select a primary key so once you select the primary key, the rest of the candidate's keys can be 
the candidate keys and they cannot be termed as the primary key because in a table there can only be a one primary key so a primary can be selected from candidate keys and consists of one or more multiple keys and the column which uniquely identifies the tuple like candidate keys the same definition was there candidate key uh, uniquely identifies the record but uh, there could be more candidate keys in a table but from these candidate keys we make a primary key and rest keys will be termed as the candidate keys so uh, a primary key should possess a unique value and not null always a table can have only one primary key i have told you a table can have only one primary key but it can have many candidate keys a primary key should be unique as we have already discussed next is the example so here you see uh, the first column and the fourth column are the unique columns and possess the unique values so if out of these two columns or out of these two candidate keys if we select one key as the primary key then rest of the key or rest of the keys will be uh, like uh, email id will be again the candidate key but SID is the primary key but email ID can also be the primary key but in that case SID will not be the primary key in one table there could be only one primary key okay next key is there could be only one primary key in the table and rest of the candidate keys could be treated as alternate keys means if uh, one primary key uh, somehow uh, tends to you know uh, redundant and you uh, made it the primary key in that case the other candidate key could be treated as the alternate keys like uh, in our table SID is the primary key and if SID we uh, remove from the table then email ID could be treated as the primary key as this this is the candidate key so they can also be uniquely identify the tuples but it depends on the administrator which candidate when candidate it uh, it has chosen as primary key which candidate key the administrator has chosen as a primary key so it depends on the administrator or depends on the user which candidate key uh, one should uh, take as the primary key so uh, we have discussed candidate key we have discussed primary key we have discussed the alternate key if you see this here sid if selected as the primary key so email id could be treated as the alternate key so uh, we have discussed the relation we have discussed the domain we have discussed uh, the different keys and they are very important uh, concepts of database hope you understood the concept and if you understood kindly share with your friends and if you have uh, any suggestion kindly let me know I'll definitely work on it. So we'll meet in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.